Welcome back everyone. This is Brian, Faith on Fire. And in this video, it's going to be kind of part two to this one right here, where I'm going to provide all new information because there's some things I, I left out. It, it was not a short video to begin with. However, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go see it. You're going to see how, you know, line is from Charlie Brown and the very famous and beloved Charlie Brown Christmas special. He recites verbatim right out of the King James Bible the message of Jesus's birth in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. And so that was the point of that video. I was showing how in the King James Bible, you also see that as the inspiration behind what I also shared, which was um, uh, Longfellow's poem called Christmas Bells, which would soon thereafter be turned into a famous Christmas carol called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And so I recited what that says. It takes it right out of the King James Bible, Luke chapter 2 and verse 14. And that was the focal point. That verse, Luke 2, 14, was the focal point of the message. Well, we're going to look a few verses higher in it in this one today. And I'm going to validate the message I brought that the King James Bible got it right with the translation. Modern Bibles do not have it right. And in fact, it, it, can, it gives it a Calvinistic bias. And there's already been the critics. I knew that they would come out that have said, no, 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 and the modern Bibles are better because the manuscripts are older and better and la, 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 right? There's been countless documentaries uh, done and studies to that effect with people on both sides of the aisle, whether or not the Tectus Recepsis is better, that the manuscripts used in modern Bible. I mean, I'm not even going to get into the weeds on that one. Uh, but this one, I think, is when we look in the scripture, and we're going to look at a lot of Bible passages that relate to it in this one. I'll try to keep this one quicker, much quicker. But uh, I, I and it's but it's all going to be new. It's all going to be new information that I didn't share in the last video. But it's going to help people understand how Bibles get distorted on a certain message. But there's sometimes little clues there that that indicate it. I'm going to share one of those clues that's right in the Gospel of Luke today. So let's start first by just going straight to it. Let me pull that up on the screen. There it is. King James Bible, Luke two, starting at verse ten. Look at this. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. What's the good message? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Doesn't get any better news than that. This is long time coming, right? Prophesied and so forth. And, and ultimately in verse 14, which was the subject or the, the main point of the last video, it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it's the goodwill toward men that has got distorted in modern Bible. So we'll take a look at that really quick in the ESV. And you can see that it's a little different, but in verse 10, you have the same basic ending, same message. But look at 14, and now it's glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So rather than it being good will toward men, referring to God's will that Jesus would come into the world at that moment in time, and that's very good, and it's God's will, therefore that's what makes it good, it's good will toward men that Jesus would come in, and Jesus is the Prince of Peace, so peace on earth, goodwill toward men, makes perfect sense. But in the ESV, it's no, it's now just for those with whom he is pleased. But the translators who messed this up, they didn't seem to be consistent in verse 10, thankfully, a little clue they left us. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people just like the King James Bible says. So how is there good news of great joy for all the people that there will be peace among those with whom God is pleased? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's, it's, there's, there's a contradiction. And I know people will say, well, sometimes in the Bible, there's this mystery. There's something that, you know, it, it seems to be contradictory, but it's just mystery. Don't buy into that. That's always an excuse for someone who can't explain the inconsistencies of their messed up theology. Just don't buy it. No matter what name they can put on it, antinomy, they can put mystery, they can put compatibilism, whatever cool little name they apply to tell you, don't believe your lying eyes. 
the Bible is got you know this contradiction, but it makes sense because it's got to because we don't want to you know go against our religious system of Calvinism. No, they're just lying to you. Um, there's a contradiction. God does not contradict Himself, and so therefore there's not. So this is a contradiction. And it's uh, evident in the text. That's why the King James Bible is where you can rely on, where it's consistent, which shall be to all people, goodwill toward men. Consistent. Now, how do we else? We know. I want to share a number of passages. Let's just jump way back to the beginning of the promise. Let's go to Genesis 12. We're going to go to Genesis 18. We're going to go to Genesis 22. And then we're going to look in the New Testament a little bit. So let's go back to Genesis 12. Now, the Lord has said Unto Abram, who of course would be named Abraham later. Look at verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, speaking about Israel, of course, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. What is this talking about? This is talking about the nation of Israel, which will be a blessing to all people because that's whom, that's the nation from whom which would be born the Savior, Jesus Christ. It starts here. Now look at verse 18 for some consistency. Genesis 18, verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. See, the Calvinism would love to tell you that God chose Abraham and in choosing him, he rejected everybody else. He chose the nation of Israel, rejected all other nations. No, it was chosen that this nation of Israel would be to bless all the other nations. The gospel would go first to the Jew, then the Gentile. Gentile meaning everyone else, all nations. Through the Son, Jesus Christ, the whole world is blessed. That's what's being announced that day of his birth in the Gospel of Luke. Now look at Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. Interesting, it's the same verse, 18, in both 18, 18 and 22, 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Speaking about Abraham, right? All nations of the earth be blessed. This is three times in Genesis this is repeated. This is not some message that that these are the chosen ones, these are the elect, and God's going to reject and cast everyone as a reprobate into the lake of fire that's not chosen. <laughs> this is how the whole world is indeed, in fact, chosen by God to be blessed through the Son, the Savior, Jesus Christ. So when you get back to the King James Bible, it's no wonder that it says, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to, toward men. Not this garbage here that says on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. That is a distortion of God's word. This over here in the King James Bible is God's word. Now listen to this. If we go to Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We have peace. Remember, we have peace on earth, goodwill toward men. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is that peace with God available to? Everyone and anyone who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior can be reconciled before God, be justified before God, be forgiven of their sins, and have peace with God through the Savior Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. This is the Apostle Paul writing this. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So how many people out there are not sinners, right? That would be zero, right? Because <laughs> the Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says if anyone claims to not have sinned, to not be a sinner, they calling God a liar and the word of God's not in them. Everyone is a sinner. So who did Jesus come into the world to save? Everyone. However, you must believe in order to be saved. The provision has been made for everyone, but people can reject the good news. And sadly, they do. Let's look at 1 John 4, starting at verse 9. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, right? Not into, not send his begotten son for the elect, right? It says, into the world, 
that we might live through him. Look at verse 14 and 15. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the elect, no, of the world. Whosoever, not just the elect, right? Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now, isn't that some good news? That's something, what does this say? Worth having joy over? I'll even go to the ESV. Let's see how the ESV says it. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Isn't that the truth, right? So at least the ESV gets that right. They just get this lower part right. They should have stuck with what this says. Glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace, good will toward men. That's the good message right there. And so I wanted to share how in verse 10 validates what the King James Bible says in verse 14. But in the ESV, it creates a contradiction. How can it be for all people? Great news of joy for all the people, but no, only the ones God's favored or God's pleased with, depending on the modern Bible version. No, no, no. Don't, don't be fooled by it. Oh, real, real quick, a little edit. I want, I'll forget this. Who saw the Calvinist Santa on the Babylon Bee? I don't even watch the ba Babylon Bee. I'm a little bit familiar with what they are and the comedy and the conservative values, which I'm all for, but, but I actually, it's not one of the things I've paid attention to, but I watched that one. That was funny. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Babylon Bee's YouTube channel and watch Calvinist Santa. Oh my, that was just brilliant. And uh, uh, I, was, I was thinking of doing something. I actually have it printed out right here. I ran out of time. Christmas is here tomorrow. But basically, uh, is it this? No, no, no. This is, this is something else. I'm sorry. I thought I had it around here. But I had a printout of Twas the Night Before Christmas. And what I was going to do is I was going to change it around to make it a Calvinist Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I had a few of the lines from it in my mind. To, but I ran out of time to do it. Maybe for next year. Maybe for next year I'll come up with something funny along those lines. But, uh, but yeah, the, the Babylon Bee thing was, was priceless. I loved it. Anyway, with that, Merry Christmas to all and everyone. And may the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.